Hey there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of The Dark Parade. I am your host, Bo, and I will be joined shortly by our guest tonight to discuss uh, Black Christmas, or Black Xmas, the, the 2006 remake of the 1974 classic, and I'm very excited for you to hear that conversation. Uh, I'm joined by Richard Glenn Schmidt, who is the host of Hello, This is the Doom Show, and author of uh, Cinema Somnambulist and a number of other books about giallo films, and he is one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to obscure and underseen horror films. Uh, he's got an, an encyclopedic knowledge of giallo films, and he's also very silly, and that combination of traits endears him to me like no other. I, I love uh, Richard to death. I think he's a wonderful guy. Uh, I can't say enough great things about him, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, before we jump into the show, just a little heads up, a little housekeeping about what's coming ahead. Um, if you are listening to this episode, there is a, a bonus episode of Found Footage Fool available now on the movie The Phoenix Incident uh, about aliens, what come to Earth. Uh, during that Phoenix Light situation and uh, go after the guy who uh, did the voice of Joel in <laughs> The Last of Us. So, you know, that's something, I guess. Anyway, you can hear all about that. Uh, found footage full, of course. Uh, the show where we apply five different criteria to found footage films to see if they uh, pass muster. And you be the judge. Uh, actually, I, I am the judge, but you can you can judge my judgment. That's something you can do. He heck, that's basically what this country is founded on, is judging other people. Anyway, that's available now. You will be uh, hearing this on Wednesday, and then on Friday, you'll be getting yourself a What You Watching with Jamie and Bo. I'm the Bo of that, and of course, Jamie Sammons uh, is the other half of that. And, we'll you know, it's just a show where we kind of kick around the old peanut talk about movies we've been watching uh horror and otherwise and mostly it's an excuse just to hear jamie salmons uh be very silly and that's a good time and i've known jamie forever and that's that's kind of the appeal of the show it th that show is more for me than any of you but uh i i think a lot of you enjoy it and uh then next week we will be joined by mark ball for Black Christmas 2019, the much maligned remake of the remake of the original 1974 classic. And I am very excited about that conversation as well. I have, That has yet to be recorded as of the time that I'm recording this. So I am eager to, uh, to see what comes of that. At any rate, um, enough dilly-dally. That is what is ahead on the Dark Parade for this week and into next week. Oh, also, you'll be getting, uh, as of uh, Monday, you'll be getting a Morbid Monday. So please, if you would, join me on, on Sunday, uh, which will be the day after Christmas for uh, Sinister Sunday. So, you know, we'll get together. We'll see what everybody got for Christmas and, uh, and take it from there. Anyway, uh, enough, enough of the foofara, enough of the hornswoggle, I think, uh, who is a wrestler. Uh, it is time to... Hang the ornaments and tinsel on uh, Black Christmas 2006, also known as Black Xmas, in a conversation where Richard and I had a blast talking about this movie, which, uh, spoilers, I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's great. I think it's super fun. Anyway, enough out of me. Uh, you're about to hear all about it. So uh, thanks, everyone. Welcome to the Dark Parade. All right, folks, it is my pleasure to welcome the, what, a guest that is inevitable, you know? And that's how I like to think of, of you, actually, is the inevitable Richard Glenn Schmidt. <laughs> um, that all of recorded history has been leading to this moment where you and I can talk about Black Xmas or Black Christmas uh, 2004. 2004? 2004? 2006. Right? 2006, I'm sorry. It, 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 I keep screwing this up because it's 1974 
2006 and then 2019 and 74 I've got locked right. but I will refer to like Black Xmas 2027 Black Christmas you know 1983 I just can't get the, the dates on the remakes <laughs> right I always remember this as 2007 for no reason it only only because I was peeking at the wiki as the kids say that I saw that it was 2006 so I've, I used the internet I've peeked at the wiki a couple of times but you gotta time it you gotta drop and then 45 minutes later, you go to the wiki so you can peek there. There you go. Um, I've already peeked in this conversation. I've, I've, I'm a multiple peeker. And <laughs> I've peeked once, but it's only going to get more uh, peeked from here. So um, you and I have recorded a, a ton. You're one of my favorite people on Earth. You know this. I love Hello, This is the Doom Show. Uh, not to step on your toes when I ask you, hey what shows do you do but hello this is the doom show is a, a constant delight for me because it's generally movies i've never seen before which is is a wonderful treat and then your conversations w whether it's with you know simon or jeffrey or whoever like they're always really fascinating and you guys are horror nerds in a way that i can only aspire to be it's just wonderful and so, oh man, uh, you you, <laughs> what have I left out? You tell me what about Hello, This Is the Doom Show that people need to know because uh, it, it's wonderful and everyone should listen to it. And if you don't, then you're a fool. Well, what you let what you left out is the inevitable disappointment that people are going to experience when they check us out. They'd be like, "Bo was talking up this poo poo." No, I uh, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of solo shows lately because uh, here it is. Uh, my poor planning plus life of my friends who are my co-hosts is getting in the way. So I am now just like jamming these top 10 list episodes. That's kind of my thing right now. Um, once the holidays settle down, everybody will be back. But yeah, we've been doing this for a decade, which is scary because we don't have 10 years worth of episodes. We have about two years worth of episodes to give me an idea of how productive we were at the beginning. Where it was like, hey, let's record in two months. Okay. And then we wouldn't. <laughs> but what what was the anniversary that you celebrated just recently? It was just a few months ago. We had we had an episode 200 That's like, right. gala event. And then which, right after that, we had the 10-year episode. Which was me going, oh, man. What are we doing? do what do we talk about what's happening and we kind of threw it together it was still fun but yeah we, we we need to maybe wait for a bigger anniversary and not like try to pack in like save it for the uh you know get the, the jerry lewis telethon style thing going on i would you know, love get, to uh, see you on stage singing about hello <laughs> this is the doom show like at 2 a.m yeah. oh yeah you know? it would it'd be a lot like uh lola heatherton on uh, SCTV, bouncing back to you. That's my speaking of SCTV. Bit. We've got an alum. Yeah. Oh, in, dude. In yes. tonight's movie, Andrea Martin, who of course was in the original 1974 oh. Black Christmas. Oh yeah. Um, so, all right, let's start here. <sighs> I think. Are you a fan of the original 74 Black Christmas? Yes, I am one of those people who who I came to it really late. I, uh, it was one of those movies I tracked down. Uh, I did not see it as a kid at all. Like, I didn't know it existed when I was a kid. And when I finally got around to it, I was really, like, impressed. Like, whoa, this is creepy and um, fun. And then it's it's got all these, like, just the tone is unbeatable. And so, you know, fast forward to the talk of this remake coming out. And I was game. So uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, and I'm I'm the same way. In fact, I saw Black Christmas for the first time like a week ago, which I no, ne no kidding, I had never seen it before. <laughs> wow, and that's brilliant. It, yeah, it it had always been sort of on the periphery, and I'm not the biggest fan of slasher films, so right. it was one of those things of like I I need to see it someday, and like one of the primary inspirations for doing the dark parade as a show in general is 
Like, I want to talk about stuff that either I really love or I haven't seen and I want to kind of do deep dives on that stuff. Just to force myself to watch some horror classics and, and not so classics, but stuff that I enjoy. And so, Black Christmas was one of those. And also, it's the Christmas season and so forth. It, it fit. It was thematically appropriate. Chronologically appropriate. But also, I just wanted to watch Black Christmas for the first time. And so I did. And, uh, you know, it kind of blew my socks off. I, I really nice. loved it. Yeah. In a, in a way that I didn't expect to. Like, it really captivated me. And I thought it was very funny. And, like, the Bob Clark-ness of that movie really shows through that it's it's kind of... Oh, yeah. It's a little subversive. And it's a little, you know... One of those movies, I think somebody said it earlier the in the Facebook group before we recorded this, but the fact that this movie exists before Halloween is like, why is John Carpenter getting all the attention when Bob Clark did the movie first, kind of? Yeah. And, and kind of did it in a really interesting way. Like all the phone call stuff and, and how nonsensical that is, but also really creepy, is, is really wonderful. And so... I'm coming to all of these movies fresh. And so as much as I love the 74 Black Christmas, and I did, when and I, I just heard this remake dragged across the coals for years. Everybody's like, this, yes. this movie sucks. And I watched oh, it and I was yeah. like, I think this movie kind of rocks. Um, it's, like, I don't think it's great, and it's certainly not as good as the 74 Black Christmas. Right. But it's a different animal, and I was able to kind of take it as a different thing, and and I really dove into it, and you know, like I've seen all the deleted scenes and the alternate endings now, and you know, interviews with the director Glenn Morgan and him talking about the movie and what what his take on it was and that kind of thing. So when you came to this movie originally, not to you know give away final reviews or anything, but yeah. did you? Like, were, were you precious about the original in a way that affected your viewing of this? No, no, I was not. I was, uh, I was like super open minded. I'm a, I'm a big, um, if a remake looks promising, I'm into it. Like, as long as the remake looks promising, I'm cool. Um, if the room, if the remake looks like a big pile of horseshit, I'm gonna skip it. And if I hear from people that I, I like and trust their opinion and they're like, oh, my God, it's wonderful. Then I'll, you know, I'll backtrack and go check out any remakes. Um, and, you know, we, we've seen all the, the misfires with the remakes of Asian horror films that were like, you missed the point. You missed the point. Nope. Nope. And this was trying to, um, <laughs> you know, use the somebody was very imaginative with what are these little symbols and strange inexplicable things from those phone calls of the original what do they mean what is you know someone just had a notepad and probably a lot of weed or something some maybe some bad drugs and we're just writing something to fill in the blanks and that's fine that's that's an interesting way to do things remaking doing shot for shot on on black christmas um, as you can see from those deleted scenes, we'll probably touch on a little bit. Wasn't working. Wasn't bad, but yeah. it wasn't working. Yeah, I totally agree, and I also think that you know, I, somebody said I, it might have even been like Mary Elizabeth Winstead um, in in one of the like cast interviews or something, but she had said. You know, like everybody knows the gig with the original, which is, you know, the calls are coming from inside the house and all that stuff. So you can't rely on that to be your your shtick. Yeah. You've got to do something different. Now, Glenn Morgan did not intend to do two killers the way that this movie turned out. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do think, just like you said, I think it's kind of interesting for to sort of explode the idea of like who are Billy and Agnes and what's going on with all that stuff and you know is it necessary no but you know if you're gonna do like they they came to Glenn Morgan with an idea of like hey we're gonna do a remake of Black Christmas you just did Willard and we thought you did a good job with that which I also agree I thought the Willard remake is actually very good 
Yeah. And so he had the marching orders of remake Black Christmas. And instead of, like you said, doing a shot for shot, he was like, well, what if we do, you know, sort of a more monstrous take on this where it's not as, uh, you know, eerie and, and, and low key and that kind of thing, but to do something that's a little more, you know, outrageous. And, uh, and so here we are with, with this remake of Black Christmas, but it just, maybe it's because so many people had told me how terrible it was that when I watched it, it was like, I, you know, is it a masterpiece? No, (laughs) but this is still way better than most slasher movies. I think, Yeah, you know, like the camera moves well, it's, it's got a, it's some great lighting in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some interesting stuff with the characters and there's some, there are things that make me laugh in this movie and, uh, all of that stuff. I just, I, you know, I thought that this movie is unfairly maligned is, is what I would say. All it takes is a second remake in 2019 that everyone hated to make people go, man, the 2006 one didn't suck as bad as this. <laughs> to pe- that plus people going, you know, I decided to reevaluate that 2006 one. And whoa, you know, man, I, I really didn't like this when it came out. And, you know, it's like, oh my God, people. Like, I, I hate to say it, but I love this, you know, from the ground run. Like, it hit the ground running for me from day one. And I just, I'll never understand the hate it got ever (laughs) yeah that's the thing that confuses me it's it's like it's different enough from the original that it doesn't just retread it and anyway but all right so yeah good let's get into this because we're gonna have a blast talking about what happens in this movie because it's wackadoo (laughs) and not to get scientific right off the bat but um so um we've got originally claire is our first to go right she is basically it it is of course the alpha kappa i think is the sorority something like that um maybe yeah alpha kappa gamma (laughs) i've got it right here so alpha kappa gamma and uh you've got claire who is wrapping a gift to her sister and it's kind of clear right off the bat that she and her sister have a bit of a strained relationship so she's you know, going home to, to visit her sister and to kind of make good on, uh, you know, we're going to get together and try to hash out some of these problems and whatnot. And then um, she starts to hear a rustling from the closet. And I really thought from jump, like, oh, this they're going to do like a dumb cat scare or something yeah. right off the bat. And <laughs> absolutely not. It is an honest to goodness killer hiding it out in the closet and wraps a yes. bag around her head, head just like in the original except that in in this movie the bag is kind of the primary uh a t- method of attack it doesn't just happen once but um anyway yeah so bag wrapped around her head um and then grabs a pen to one up the original and just stabs her right in the in the eyeball yeah, no, fountain pens. Dude, you need a license for one of those things. Those things are deadly. Yeah, and there's so much eye trauma in this movie. Why? That's one of my favorite things. Every time I watch it, I get to that question of why is eyes a thing for the, the this pair of uh well mainly one of the killers. Well, I mean, I mean both of them. They they both yeah, love eyeballs. I do know why um, one of the killers does it, but that's because something happened to them. Right. But what started this whole bullshit? I it's think it's so just, great. look, Agnes is just impressionable. She wants, oh, yeah. uh, she wants to, you know, do what brother daddy does. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I have a lot of questions about Agnes at the end of this. I, I have, I have. It, it is, you know, this is like viewing number 14 or 15 for me. I've seen this so many times, it's embarrassing. That, I mean, I just, now I have questions. <laughs> for the first time ever, I have um, figured out, or I've written down all the names of all the girls here. 
Um, oh, well done. It's, it's Claire, Dana, Lauren, Megan, Melissa, Heather, Eve, uh, Miss Mac. Kelly. And Kelly. There it yeah. is, Kelly. Yeah. Kyle is not one of the ladies. No. And, of course, our Agnes. Sure. Um, who is androgynous, to say the least. And doesn't look like her childhood self in any known universe of no. squinting. You'd have to rip your own eyes out to think it was her. Where was it? Somebody said that the sort of, you know, not not covered in the exposition of the film was that she had just been getting shock therapy over and over for years. And it's like, well, sure, but I don't think that changes the basic facial structure. Or you know, or make you six foot two or whatever. Right. Or, make <laughs> yeah, just make you a gargantuan. But, all right, so... <sighs> There's a whole sequence, and we're going to kind of do this a little bit of, out of order because I want to just stick with the mental institution. Clark yes. Asylum, named after uh, Bob mm-hmm. Clark, of course. There you go. Uh, at, the, at the Clark Asylum, there's this Santa that shows up, and he's like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. And they're like, not here, not in the, the hallway of psychopaths. <laughs> like, what party do you think you're going to? These people are locked away. <laughs> for good reason they're all monsters and he's like oh well what about this one over here and they're like did you just not hear what i said you need to leave but while you're here this over here is billy lens and we're about to give him christmas dinner and we're giving him chicken because it's the closest thing to people that we can give him just like mom used to taste (laughs) Yeah. And you know what'd be great is if Laurie Strode from uh, Halloween Resurrection, she was in one of the uh, rooms of the asylum. Like she was next door to Billy Lens. That would have been oh, good. Oh, that would have been good. Or from Halloween Kills. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's finally had it. <laughs> or or has a romantic moment with him. Um, mm, so, <laughs> the, so Billy then gives a guard a little wrapped christmas present newspaper wrapped which is how the lens family does all of the all of their wrapping as we we learn and it's uh inside it says i'll be home for christmas and so the guard peeks in and he doesn't see billy and he's like oh shit did this uh psychopathic killer escape and so he goes into the cell like a big dumb dumb which <sighs> You know, this is just a bad move. This is bad training, is what it comes yeah. down to. I wrote in my notes, call for backup, dude. Yeah, yeah. And so he goes in, The there's the rocking chair going back and forth. And he finds this uh, this hole in the wall. And so he, he takes out his flashlight to look in, in the hole as if Billy's going to be hiding in there. <laughs> but Billy is instead under the bed where he's been sucking on a candy cane to turn it into an actual lethal weapon <clears throat> and stabs this guard in the neck uh, yeah. and breaks the candy cane off in the neck, which I appreciate. And um, then he, so Billy gets out of the cell, runs into the dude dressed like Santa Claus, murders him. And and then strolls out of this joint dressed as Santa with the dead Santa in the back. Yes. There's there's two things I love about this sequence. One, the security guard's voice. He doesn't say in your dreams, Billy, about him going home. He's like, in your dreams, Billy. Like it's such a cool performance <laughs> and such a great voice. And it's just like, oh, I love him. The other thing that happens, I call it the idle hands effect, where um, it happens twice in this movie. Once when Santa gets killed, and another time when one of the girls gets killed. All you see is you don't see any violence happening. You see a tiny little splat, well, not a tiny, a big splash of blood hitting the floor or hitting the inside of the car. And this happens a lot in the movie Idle Hands that came out like years before this, where they can't show you what happened for the MPAA's sake. And I'm sure this film pushed 
<laughs> pushed real hard. Yeah. But I've been watching the unrated version for so many years, I don't even know anymore. But, like, they do this splash of blood that's really cartoony. Like, splash! And you're like, okay. Uh, was that the uh, the blood sack in a person of, um, in their, their their front area? Like, what is that? You... <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's right in the duodenum. Is where all that blood is kept. Yeah. But, yeah, but... And Glenn Morgan kind of wanted to do more of that, or mostly that, m- much like the Bob Clark movie, where most of the deaths kind of happen either off camera or the camera is focused on something else while yeah. the murder is happening. And and Glenn Morgan wanted to do much the same thing. And it was really the Weinsteins who were like, no, 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 no. This has got to be as bloody as shit. And he was like, okay... And, uh, well, there's one in particular we'll talk about in, in a little bit with uh, Michelle Trachtenberg that there is a, like, ten times gnarlier version oh, of that doctor. death. Yes. Uh, that was, I think, in the European release is is where it's, that ended up. It's definitely in the extras on yeah. the disc. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> by the way, for shame, movie world, for not having this on Blu-ray. Like, the fact that it had, oh, it had a Blu-ray that went out of print. They did not make enough copies of it. It came and went so fast. It was like going for three to four hundred dollars. I, I don't think they made more than a thousand copies. I've never that's seen such it. A I shame. just I just saw that it exists, and I'm like, what? And I have a feeling that this will be all about um, Scream Factory. I feel like Scream Factory is going to knock this one out of the park one day because it, it's just like a title that I, I can just imagine their artwork for it and ho- like I'm holding it in my virtual hands thinking about it like my mental brain hands yeah I, 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 don't, want I don't the, know what to call that the accompanying the, my brain hands the accompanying post I think they call that a Belial um, yes <laughs> but the accompanying like you know one sheet poster that's included with the reversible oh, I can't uh, wait. Sides. Uh, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, I w- it's, it's a real bummer because I think... Actually, the DVD has some good extras. I wish yeah. it had a commentary. That's really the one thing that it's missing. But I, I feel bad for Glenn Morgan because he essentially says on that disc, he's like, man, Willard didn't do well. If this thing doesn't go, I, I'm probably going to be in movie jail forever. And this movie came out and didn't do well, and he hasn't done a feature film since. And that's a real bummer nope. because both of like Willard and this are both good horror movies. And yet somehow James Wan continues to make movies all willy nilly. <laughs> nah, it's fine. The Waniverse. We could have the Morgan verse. I you know what? I already like more movies by Glenn Morgan than I do James Wan. Um, I can't argue with that. I, I literally can't. <laughs> so but yeah, you're right. This whole sequence is, is a lot of fun. So, all right, let's go over to the girls of, of uh, Alpha Kappa, Kappa Alpha. What did I just say? Alpha Kappa is where they are. Alpha Kappa, Alpha Gamma Gabla. And so you've got Kelly and her boyfriend Kyle are making oh out boy. in front of, oh the, boy. <laughs> of the house. And it's it's a real, like, you know, not right now, Kyle. Ooh, you got me all hot and bothered. <laughs> but I got to get inside. And... Uh, he's like, well, how about we just go, you know, fuck. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to go inside and I'm spending Christmas with my sisters. Yep. Uh, here at the sorority. And he's like, all right, whatever. Um, hey, if any of them say that they've got videos, uh, would you do me a favor and not watch those? <laughs> yes. Kyle is the, is the bad boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is, uh, he's barely functional as a human being he's a little rage monster who um apparently enjoys sleeping with uh these invaders in his neighborhood which would be you know this greek village did not exist when he was a kid it was all just like uh his neighborhood so now that these houses have become uh, uh, sorority houses fraternity houses etc he's pissed off and has a big old chip on his shoulder the size of montana and so he's gonna he's gonna take it out on these girls uh, with his, his his little peepee and his video camera. And sure enough, Megan is upstairs, one of our other sorority sisters, just watching the video of her and Kyle oh my fucking. God. 
the backstory of how this happened where he pissed off a guy at work. He took my tapes and put them on the net. AOL.com, brother. It's all on Vimeo now, man. I don't even know how to get it off. Uh, Oh, my God. So. Help me. (laughs) There's Melissa, who is Michelle Trachtenberg, and she's the sassy one. Well, okay, Bo. Yes. Let's talk about this for a second. Please. Um, the reason I wrote down all these girls' names and wrote little uh, signifiers by, like, uh, you know, to help me remember them is that even after this many viewings, I still mix up these, these poor characters because one failing with this movie is it needed to combine at least two people. And it's not because, you know... Um, the actor, the actresses involved aren't, they're not good. They're great. Everyone's great. But when you have a movie that has to move this fast and keep it moving, keep it moving, a couple of the characters could have just been one person. I, I think. I, yeah, I probably would have gone with probably if you combined Melissa and who is the one that gets drunk Lauren. Lauren. If you combine Lauren and Melissa, that makes some sense to me because, and, and then no. essentially you've got the Margot Kidder character from the original, right? And then you, you've because because we've got a party of five. Dana, she, and Buffy Melissa are very similar. That's how I have them written down. <laughs> Buffy uh, they are very similar characters. They're a little sassy, but of course, um, Michelle Trackenberg. She's the one who's taking care of our drunk, our drunk character, Lauren. And of course, Lauren is the, I'll do a nude scene, I guess, whatever. So Sporty spies, have, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have the famous shower scene from the original Black Christmas recreated. Oh, wait, there wasn't one, but yeah. we got one here, bro. <laughs> but I, I do kind of like that scene because it's like the, the scene from Top Secret where everybody's like coming in from different directions because it's like there's <laughs> holes in the floor and the wall and the ceiling and like yes <laughs> like billy and agnes are fucking everywhere in this oh house God. like the crawl spaces and the space between walls and the floors and everything yep. have to be like two to three feet hey. uh it, i i don't know how this house is to code but if you com- if you combine those two characters, you'd have a sixteen foot tall murdering pervert <laughs> who couldn't fit in the walls. Yeah, instead of the <laughs> seven foot murdering pervert that we've got, who barely fits in the walls. Their final form is Billy on on Agnes's shoulders with a big trench coat. <laughs> yeah, just like that last winter beast creature, you know. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, yes. All right, so you've also got Heather, who's Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who yes. is kind of the Southern girl, and oh, she's boy. Megan's roommate, I, I think. think. And, I mean, not that that matters all that much, but um, Heather is kind of like a traditionally good girl for the most part. Yeah, she's, uh, although, she's supposed to be the Southern Belle girl, yeah. who's this sheltered... Uh, D- uh, rich daddy uh, nascar daddy was the, <laughs> the and, words they used <laughs> and this is kind of coming off of her in final destination three which you know i've never seen that so i had i had no idea she even was in that that's hilarious so yeah i think she i want to say it was like a party or something that she was doing in support of that where somebody from this production was like Hey, uh, you want to do another one of these where you just get murdered horribly? And yep. she was like, sure, why not? She, uh, she's game. She likes horror movies. Um, of course. And then there's Dana, Party of Five, like you said, Lacey Chabert, um, who I think is genuinely funny in this movie. I like the fact that she is kind of your one of two sort of take no shit characters. Right. And actually, the funniest <laughs> line she has got cut. Uh, and it's the it's the scene when they're comparing phones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it's not in the the even the unrated unrated version, but it's one of the deleted scenes 
where they're kind of going around the room talking about like, oh, my ringtone is this, my ringtone is this. And she has kind of a more basic phone. And they're like, well, what is your, uh, what is your uh, uh, cell phone get you? And she says, validation. And I thought that was a really great line. And yes. it got cut from the movie. I was like, that's a terrific line for her. That's a line that ages well, too, dude. Yeah, so for good. sure. She's the pre-influencer. Look at that. Um, and then you've got Mrs. McHenry, uh, or Mrs. Mack, who is played by Andrea Martin, of course, from uh, the original film, who is uh, the house mother. Oh, my God. My favorite line from her is, language, language. <laughs> When she's yelling at one of the girls to stop saying fuck. It's so good. Language. Language. Andrea Martin is really fun in this. Uh, and she looks like she's having a great time. So, Oh, yeah. She's uh, America's Canadian treasure. She is. Uh, Second City Television, of course, named after Chicago. Oh, yeah. Uh, America's Second City. Anyway... So, all these girls, they're doing a Secret Santa thing, and they start off by saying, like, oh... Um, who has the gift for Billy because one of the traditions of this sorority is that they give a gift to Billy Lenz, the murderer who used to live in this house, <laughs> which is kind of creepy. And so we get sort of a flashback story of who Billy is. And Billy was a child born to the worst mother on the earth who had a liver disorder that made his skin yellow and that's why the mother hates him i guess and yeah she she's it says that uh when she looked at billy all she saw was her husband who she hated so she hated billy and of course her husband the father is a completely decent human being yeah. who who seems to genuinely care about his family and his son and even when the mother is like, hey, uh, you're not getting any gifts because Santa Claus is dead. The <laughs> Russian shot him down. <laughs> Which is one of the big laughs in the movie for me. Oh my god. It's so good. And But uh, the father is like, look, your mom's a little drunk. How about you go upstairs and in a hole in the wall, I've got a little something for you. And so the kid runs up there, and it turns out it's like a uh, an Apollo rocket ship with the the Soyuz, um, and so forth. But as he gets older, the mother treats him worse and worse. And every time that the father tries to defend him, the mother gets more and more pissed. Until one day, the mother and I guess the guy that she's just fucking. Yep you know in front of the father it seems like maybe that's just his thing uh, boy, I just I like I like what I like being cut I can't help it <laughs> just what I do <laughs> but um he ends up getting brained with uh, like get, gets a plastic bag wrapped around his head and then brained with a hammer yes I uh I turned my subtitles on for this scene because I never realized, the, because Billy's listening to this argument unfold, and <laughs> the guy's like, so who is this? The, the husband's like, so who is this, the guy you're fucking? And she's like, rah, 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 rah. And then he's like, oh, I was in Vietnam. You think I'm afraid of a guy holding a fucking hammer? And actually, you should have been mm -hmm. very afraid, Mr. Veterinarian. Because you got horribly murdered in front of your son. <laughs> yeah. And so the bag thing comes into play. We see the, the bag go on his head and we see the hammer striking his head. But you don't see any eye violence at this stage. Not yet. Would have been would have been nice if they'd done like if you'd literally seen one of his dad's eyes like stuck on the claw hammer as or something like that. That would have been would have helped me understand the eye violence a little more as we go along. But the bag thing is totally relevant. Yeah. So after murdering the father, they bury him in the basement. The mother and, and her new lover, who I only uh, can assume is a butcher. 
I don't know that for sure, but that's how it feels to me. He's a he's a perhaps a carpenter or a butcher, one of the two. Yeah. And while they're burying the body, they hear like a little scurrying around in the basement. And they realize that Billy is using the crawl spaces to get around, and they see him, and he scurries back to the attic where he lives. Um, and they so they get a padlock and lock him into the attic to try to keep him there for good. Um, and so then we cut back to our, our, our sorority house and all the girls are like, that is fucking terrible. Why are we doing this as our Christmas story? (laughs) And Andrea Martin is like, well, it's true. It all happened. (laughs) Like that's, I'm just telling you a true Christmas story. And Heather is the one who says, like, oh, yeah, I got the name Billy, but I also thought that this was terrible and just decided not to do it because why on earth would we celebrate a serial killer on Christmas? Yep. And um, and she says it's offensive to the birth of Jesus. It makes a mockery <laughs> of the holiday. <laughs> and Oh, boy. And then one of the weirder red herrings of this movie happens because she's gonna she starts storming <clears throat> off upstairs. Yep. And then she runs into Eve, who is this girl with like big Coke bottle glasses and just seems weird where she is giving uh, a gift to Heather, which is a like the crystal unicorn from the 74 black Christmas, yep. which comes into play later. But, um, Heather is just like, uh, thanks, I guess. Um, you're weird. I'm going to go to my room now. Bye y'all. And so she takes off. E- Eve's line of why she picked the unicorn is great. She goes, I, I know you're into like the Bible and stuff. <laughs> right. Which yes. Is, like, amazing. Like, right, because there are the number of unicorns in the Bible proper. Dude, everywhere. Yeah. Deuteronomy. Um, Unicorn-eronomy <laughs> as well. Wow. I, I think that's in the back of the Bible. It's yeah, toward, check, towards the, the, check end. the index. Yeah, yeah, it's towards the end. And so Eve is clearly upset that Heather blew off her unicorn gift. And so she's going to leave. And then Kelly and Lauren, a.k.a. Sporty sporty Spies in my mind, is heading upstairs to tell Claire and Megan that they're going to open presents. And Claire, as we know, is dead at this point. Megan is too busy watching the porn of her and Kyle over and over again. Yes. And there's a bit here where Lauren is trying to, like, tell Kelly she has to stand up for herself and bang on the door and all that kind of stuff and then they they take off uh they can't find claire megan's still too busy one presumes rubbing one out to this video she does watch herself having sex with this kyle guy for a long time from the time that kelly came in I mean, it started before that because we see her what like as soon as she walks yeah. in the door, she Megan is upstairs watching this. From that point, through the story of Billy, through the Eve gift, looking for Claire, and then to Megan's room, and she's still watching this video. <laughs> she's charging those batteries, Bo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank God she got some uh, some rechargeable ones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, something that plugs into the wall. <laughs> Bob Rita Zilla, it'd be, as uh, Mojo Nixon once said. And <laughs> so uh, they take off back downstairs, having accomplished nothing. And Megan hears this snow globe going off, and she's like, "What's that? Is that something in the attic?" Is somebody playing a joke on me? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, flick my bean here, and you guys are distracting me with all this snow globe music <laughs> from the attic. So she goes up there and finds 
Claire's body in the rocking chair. Again, the the direct homage to the seventy four Black Christmas is Claire in the uh, in the rocking chair uh, with the bag on her head, and then then we get um, the snow globe smashed into her cranium, and then a bag over her head, and then her eyes are gouged out. Yep. Oh yeah. Which is all of which I I like. And so Lucio, Lucio Fulci would have been very proud. Oh my all god! All eye violence. He would have been like, "Whoa, too much. Tone it down, you guys. Come on." This is coming from the guy who did Zombie. All right, too yeah. much eye trauma. Freaking me out. <laughs> You're freaking me out, says Lu- Lucio Fulci. <laughs> You're freaking me out, uh, he says. <laughs> so we get our first phone call here. Uh, of the the killer making all kinds of weird noises and then sporty spice is kind of screwing with whoever it is on the other line and then before they hang up the the killer is like i'm gonna kill you uh to lauren this is the scene i wish they'd slowed down like like come on it's okay to it's okay to hang with some atmosphere let this kind of play itself out. I mean, that's one of the things that makes the original so powerful and, and like a, you know, a rich viewing experience every time is the, the disturbing nature of the phone calls and the, just like, uh, like, um, for lack of a better term, pregnant with meaning, like all the looks on the different girls faces, as you see them reacting to this this horrific, disgusting uh, Billy Lens style <laughs> uh, obscene phone call, and it's like, man, if they just calm down, that's a big thing with like you know mid two thousand slashers, mid two thousands horror horror movies is nobody slows down just for a few seconds. You're not you're not going to notice a few seconds at the end of the movie extra. You know, just give it some room to breathe. That, that's it's almost like, why did they have the phone calls? And they're also less vague. Oh, yeah, they're very specific. Right. Like, the, these are just, like, by the way, we just, you know. And later on, the, the calls start coming from the victim's phones and things yeah. like that. So it's, I, you're right. But also, I, I can... I can I, I wish there were some more atmosphere, but also the fact that this movie just goes bam, bam, bam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does not stop. <laughs> it's like asking for a, a freight train coming at you to, to slow it down, brother. <laughs> right, like, you know, let's stop and smell the mo- the roses as this locomotion, <laughs> uh, locomotive, rather, just barrels let's do down. do the locomotion, yeah. You know, everybody's trying a brand new dance now, Richard. I don't know if you heard about this. It's called language. 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 <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, they they find out that this is in fact coming from Megan's cell phone, and they're like, "Oh, it's Megan just screwing with us," or maybe she's flicking the bean because she would not come out of that room. Also, <laughs> I thought I heard a buzz, and so then they decide they're going to open up their presents. Uh, they give Andrea Martin some lingerie as a gag, uh, oh, which again, a kind of a nod towards the original. And then Kelly is like, you know what? I'm going to go check on Claire and Megan again. So, uh, before she can do that, however, Kyle comes out of Megan's room and she, like all the other girls come up to, to, uh, find her. And he's like, oh, sorry, everybody. I was just trying to surprise you. And they're like, in Megan's room? What? What? His first mistake is saying, well, I tried to get in, but I couldn't. Um, and only Megan's room's window was open. You're like, how the hell do you even know which room is hers, you freaking idiot? Yeah. And <laughs> then and, and Andrew Martin is like, have you seen Megan? And he's like, I haven't seen her, even though I just climbed through her window. And then uh, he he makes a, a, a comment about Billy and then tells more of the story of Billy Lenz's past. And this oh, is yeah. where shit gets 
crazy. Yes. As, like, as if the cucked father getting killed by a hammer and buried in in the basement or in the in the crawl space isn't weird enough. So Billy's mom and the stepfather continue living in the murder house. But <laughs> her big complaint is she can't get pregnant. And so one night she gets real ginned up and goes to the attic where she has sex with her 12 year old son Billy yeah and then gives birth to the baby Agnes yes. and she loves this inbred baby that she has now but it's a can, miracle you know, this miracle m- of Agnes the miracle yeah. baby <laughs> but still treats Billy like shit even now or even though Billy is the father slash brother of this child. Yep. And this is where we get the mother saying, she's my family now to yep. Billy about Agnes. So that, uh, that will be a recurring theme uh, of murder uh, throughout the film. She also says to the delight of Agnes, um, you're my Christmas cookie and I could eat you all up. <laughs> and the little actress who plays Agnes, the look on her face at her drunk piece of shit mother is like, I don't know how to react to you. You freaking circus freak. You've seen blood rage, right? The Thanksgiving slasher. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah. You blood seen that blood freak. Uh, no blood rage. The one with, um, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh no, I haven't. I was thinking of Blood Freak, the one where the guy turns into the turkey. Or oh whatever. no, no, no! That that movie is also something that exists. But <laughs> Blood Rage, uh, the, the the actress who plays the mother, I'm I'm blanking on her name now. In that, she and uh, freaking uh, Billy's mom have a lot in common, and that there's, you know, it's it's a holiday thing. You got to have these slightly incestuous mother of blood rage to the straight up pedophile horrific monster of this movie <laughs> it it's nuts man the, this this Ooh. whole sequence is like what is going on and then what happened and then what happened all right all right ah so yes. one christmas richard one special christmas morn agnes gets a doll and this makes Billy go bananas because he has once again been passed over for any kind of gifts. He is the yellow skin stepchild in the attic. And so he loses his shit, breaks the attic door open, attacks Agnes, yanks out one of her eyeballs yep, and eats it. Right in front of the the mother and the the stepfather. Right. And so they, of course, don't take this well. But Billy ends (laughs) up stabbing the stepfather right in the face. And then he takes a dough roller and beats his mother to death with said dough roller. At which point he takes, uh, like, cookie molds. Yes. And takes big chunks out of her, cooks them up, and so when the police finally bust in to rescue Agnes, who is not dead, but is just, you know, one would presume, traumatized. In shock, yeah. Um, w- and, and finds the other two bodies, and Billy is eating these flesh cookies <laughs> made from the back of his mother. Okay, I'm one of those people who I have never found cannibalism in horror movies gross. So I guess that's just me hoping for a new meat experience someday. But sure, um, the thing that freaks me out about that sequence is when he's beating his mother with the freaking uh, um, rolling pin. The He's hitting her so hard that it's shaking the floor of the kitchen. And there's a shot where they're showing the... A plate of cookies <coughs> bouncing 
from every time he whacks her with it, the cookie, the table uh, shakes. It's like, oh man, he's really living it up. And a lot of these flashbacks are done in almost like giallo kind of lighting setups. Oh yeah, big and, time. And I get it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know why people hate on this movie. This looks great. They went all out to make this a beautiful movie. And just like perfect example is the kitchen's all Christmassy colored and everything's really like hyper um, gel lighting craziness christmas lights on every square inch of this fucking house the best part is the oven lietta is a big fan of this oven the brand name is flare and it has this glass with like a weird pattern on it front so all you see when the oven is on is this burning red like christmasy red uh oven in the kitchen it just adds to like the whole sequence so good yeah they they exaggerated a lot of the red lighting in this movie um morgan said it was because you know red is so associated with christmas and you know like the the red coat that santa wears came from coca-cola and that kind of thing so basically anything red in the movie was just turned to 11 but it looks fantastic and so after uh kyle ends up telling this horrifying story about Billy and cannibals and eye eating and all that stuff. Um, Kelly and Kyle are still in Megan's room. All the other girls take off. And this is where Kelly discovers the video on Megan's computer. Oh, brother. And and as you pointed out, this is like Kyle is like, well, it was from a long time ago. And my buddy was real pissed at me. And... Uh, sorry. It, it, I really like you, and it won't happen again. <laughs> and then, after Kelly is freaked out, she's like, I don't want to hear any of this right now. And instead of playing it cool, like, I think the move here, Richard, yes, is you're like, look, I know you're upset. This was a long time ago. This is before we were dating. It, this is a whole revenge porn kind of situation. But I understand why you're upset. I'm going to go away for a little while and let you calm down. And then if you feel feel like you still want to talk to me, you know my number. Yep. But I understand because this is a lot. But I want you to know I love you. This is not the fact that you saw this. I, I was breaking <laughs> in here to try to get rid of this because I never wanted you to, to see this. It, I, it was never meant for your eyes. I was trying to get rid of this, but the internet, what are you going to do? Uh, and now it's everywhere and it's on YouTube. So, sorry. That's it. Happy ending. Yeah. Or he just presses play on the video and they watch it together. And he goes, look how much better I am at sex now with you. Look, she and I have nothing. This is terrible. I never would have done this hip move. <laughs> Had I known what it looked like. And now I know. And that's why I'm so much better. Also, I didn't once go down on her. If you watch it cover to cover, you'll notice. Never... I was afraid. I was afraid to go downtown. I didn't go south of the border. And that was on me. <laughs> but now you know. You well know. Now, I am a, now I'm, a, I'm a cunning linguist. That's right. I, I start south of the border. <laughs> and work my way north. <laughs> So well, we could we could do this all night. This is great. <laughs> As could he. <laughs> so, but, but instead, what he says is he calls them all a bunch of spoiled bitches and leaves, which is not the right move. Oh my! And the most real thing in this whole thing is freaking Andrea Martin's character shoving his ass down the stairs, like get out of here. I'm like, dude, that's that feels so real. I love it. Yeah, it's so good. And we get rid of Kyle only to introduce uh, another character to our movie who is Claire's half sister Lee. Oh boy. Who, I wrote that um, I wrote that she was one of the real housewives of insert city here, this lady <laughs> of Alpha Kappa. I love this character so much. Oh I, my God. I do too. And I like the fact that the movie tries to throw a little bit of suspicion on her. <clears throat> when ah. when she says like oh i'm here like i'm not only am i ha her half sister 
but because we've established that Agnes, the I, the missing eyed incestuous daughter of Billy is somewhere in an institution. Yep. And so it's got, like, oh, got... okay, well, Agnes is probably coming home right. and maybe this is her. Yeah, we, we got Kyle is a, is a, is a freaking red herring. We got uh, Lee, the sister's red herring. We got Eve, who's a red herring. Um, presumably that nurse that the Santa tried to hook, hook up with at the asylum, she's one of the killers, maybe. Potentially, yeah. That was We didn't talk about that, but there is a nurse that's just like, Hey, Santa, there's nothing sexier than a fat guy in a red coat. You want to <laughs> do it? I'll sit on your lap. <laughs> and look, as a guy who has very recently played Santa Claus, doesn't happen like that. But then again, maybe I had a Mrs. Claus with me. Maybe you that weren't was the at a, You weren't at the uh, the asylum. You weren't at the, uh, the, the Clark Asylum. Wasn't I? Anyway. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I assumed too much. <laughs> so Lee explains that she is there for Claire, and they're like, well, we haven't found Claire who are you again and what are you doing here and when did you and she's like oh yeah yeah i used to be an alpha kappa sister and andrea martin is like when she's like yep. uh 93 and she's like oh well i i was house mother in 93 that's when i started this gig and lee says well you know it could have been 92 and i also I wasn't really part of the sorority for all that long, so... Yep. She says, I fucking hated it here. Yeah. <laughs> she she is a good character. I really like her. Oh, Doctor. So good. And while they're trying to suss out who the hell she is, the power goes out in this place. And one of my favorite moments, actually, is when they're like, oh, well, the power's out. You know, it's the storm. And I think it might even be Lee who's looking out the window and sees the sorority down the road and she's like, huh, I wonder why it is that there are two houses on this street and only one of them doesn't have power. Does mm -hmm. that seem, you know, serial killer-esque to anyone else? And they're like, mm, maybe. Could be. Um, all right, so now we are missing Claire, Megan, and Dana. Um, and so we're all looking for them. Uh, and then we get a phone call. Oh, wait, I'm skipping over the fact that uh, Dana, by the way, has gone looking for the, uh, the the breaker box or whatever in the crawl space. Oh, boy. And it's actually one yes. of the kind of the cooler deaths of the movie where she just gets grabbed from behind while she's in the crawl space and is trying to scramble for, uh, like, a garden... Uh, what do you call them? With the three tines? Yeah, like a garden with the three prongs. Yeah, I'm not sure what those are called. Um, like a hand rake or something like that? Anyway, whatever it is, you go. she's trying to grab it, and then the killer gets over her because the killer's eight and a half feet tall and has more reach, like Shaquille O'Neal, and <laughs> grabs this thing... And just jams it into her cranium. Oh, yeah. And it, But it's a nice moment where you see her go from struggling to nothing. She yeah. just freezes they, up. They did a really cool effect with it, too, where um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like a dummy of her. I'm pretty sure it was just the actress playing dead. But right when the killer strikes, they have her with like a fisheye lens on the camera coming towards the camera and they speed it up to make it really inhuman looking and very strange. And the way her, like you said, she goes from being very much alive to being very dead in that split second. And it just the way her body feels like, it looks like, I don't know what her body feels like. Um, I watch this with my wife, okay? <laughs> um, the way her body stops moving is so, like, oh, it's just... It's just so inhuman and, and, and really freaky. I love it. Yeah, it, it's really good. So, yeah, so Dana is now dead. Um, Lauren is taken upstairs because she gets too sauced and starts puking on the coffee table. 
And and this is also where we get the shower sequence with her where uh, I think it's Kelly who takes her upstairs to get her cleaned up. And we see the eyes in the uh, tiles of the floor and everything yeah. looking at her. But, all right, so uh, downstairs everybody's like, hey, where are all the other girls that have mysteriously gone missing in this house over the past, I don't know, hour or so? <laughs> and... Then somebody makes another call from Dana's cell phone. It's another, you know, pervy uh, sounding call. And so they go outside to look for Dana. And Heather and Lee find that Eve's car is still outside. And when they open the car door, Eve's head rolls out. Yeah, so she's been dead for, like, she was, like, the second victim, probably. Yeah, yeah, after Claire, she was probably the, the next one to go. Yeah, and it's like, oh, man, I'm really sad that that actress, uh, she was a model, apparently. Because mm -hmm. I thought she was really cool, and I love Eve, I love that whole thing. Uh, she never worked before or since in, in any acting roles for films. Like, ah, oh, yeah, this it's... was your big break, kid, except it was a huge failure. Which still is inexplicable to me. I don't know how this movie tanked uh, as hard as it did. Like, I understand it not being t Titanic, but also, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if it was? Wouldn't it be great if we were constantly chasing the billion-dollar mark set by the remake of Black Christmas? It'd uh, be our Avatar 2, my friend. Oh, if only. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they realize, like, oh shit, there is a killer among us now. And run back into the house. Uh, Kelly calls the police, but the police are like, look, I don't know if you looked out the window, but it's really snowy out there. So it may be, you know, a couple of hours before we get to your murder scene. <laughs> you know, crack police in this town, apparently. <laughs> uh, which I really appreciate. And then... Andrea Martin is like, okay, well, we're all going to get in my car then, and we're going to get the hell out of here. But Kelly is like, well, first of all, if it's that snowy that the police can't get to us, we're not going to get very far. Also, we can't just abandon our sisters who are missing. Like, we don't know if they're dead or in trouble or what, so we need to hang tight. And Heather, being the bright one, is like, Fuck that noise. What did you say about a car, Andrea Martin? Let's go. Yes. Which is the thing, people. You get all of your weapons, you put your backs to each other, and you wait for the cops. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I, but I love that, you know, it, it makes sense why one group wants to go one way and one group wants to go the other. People are like screaming at each other, I'm not leaving Lauren alone you bitch mm -hmm. it, it's so good like everything that i i, I kind of feel like you know some of my complaints about the characters uh it just requires a lot of attention to kind of like get the gist of everything i think um i'm still not going to give the movie any points back for you know i've loved this for years and i'm still i still bitch about the characters I mean, I like them more each viewing, and I'm I'm enjoying them more with this conversation we're having. But I still am like, damn, this thing is, it's clunky, but nothing's, nothing happens for no reason. Well, in in thematically, I think it works because so much of the movie is about, and it, it, it's frustrating because like one of the deleted scenes is actually the statement of theme of the movie. Which is like, hey, you know, your family isn't just who you're born to. It's the family that you make. Right. And so yes. Kelly is essentially saying like, no, we these are our sisters. This is our family. So we can't abandon them. And Heather is like, again, fuck that noise. You can have all the family you want. I'm getting out of here with a yeah. lady from SCTV. Right. Kelly gets it. Kelly understands sisterhood better than Mrs. Mack who's been the freaking house mother for 23 years. Yeah. I mean, I guess the <laughs> argument I would make for her, and I don't know why I'm defending her behavior here, but I think the argument I would make is her take on it is I need to go get help 
for these no. girls. Because if we all stay here, no help is coming. So I'm going to try to go down the road and, and get some help. And Heather is just like, I'm along for the ride because I don't want to be in this house anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, of all the heads we found and whatnot. And, <laughs> and all the phone calls from other people who are likely dead at this point. So they go out to Andrea Martin's car. And there's another great bit I really like oh here. Oh my god. Uh, where Andrea Martin, they're like, they finally get the car started. And she just pulls out like this wire brush thing. And yep. and uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead goes, "Oh my God, what is that?" And she goes, "Are you kidding me? Like it's yep. such a like, what are you talking about? This is just, I'm gonna brush the snow off the car." Oh my God, that is my favorite. That is a laugh out loud. Mary Elizabeth Winstead has the best comic timing, and she's paired up with Andrea Martin mm-hmm. of all people to get this great moment. Like, what is that thing? Yeah, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> and. Woo! And so Andrea Martin gets out of the car to get the snow off the window. And while she's brushing the snow off, she sees that there's somebody in the car with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And then there's this great splatter of blood from within the car that strikes the interior of the windshield. Sending Andrea Martin skittering back to the sorority house where she bangs into a wall which then causes uh, an icicle, a big icicle from one of the eaves to come down and pierce her skull. Which is like a second reference to a Christmas story in this movie. Mm -hmm. Because the other reference is they actually have the leg lamp in one of the windows. Yes. Yes, they do. (laughs) Yes, they do. Oh Um, my god. You'll shoot your eye out or you'll just bump a wall. I, yeah, and again, this is the thing I like about this remake is that it's clear that Glenn Morgan really dug not just Black Christmas, but had a lot of affection for Bob Clark and was yeah. just like, oh, hey, let's let's tip our hat to this guy, not just the Black Christmas stuff, but let's reference a Christmas story. And I mean, you could kind of argue that the shower stuff is a reference to Porky's, which oh, is God. also a Bob Clark movie. That's what that's what Billy was sticking through the hole in the floor. I knew it. That's right. All she did was grab it. Hang on, movie would have been over. What are you doing, Billy? <laughs> um, and so we, we, so now Heather and Mrs. Mack are dead. Um, and then Lee from inside is like, "Hey, isn't it weird that that car's just been running outside for a little bit and nobody's tried to leave?" And she decides, well, I'm going to go check out what's going on. Kelly is, says, all right, well, I'm coming with you then because we need to stick together now that we've decided uh, to split up. But that turns out uh, maybe to have been a bad idea. And so yeah. Melissa and Lauren are now left in the house, which is Michelle Trachtenberg and Sporty Spice. Um. And so, as they leave, somebody grabs uh, Heather's unicorn and is walking down the hall uh, towards Lauren's room. So we cut from that to the garage where Lee ends up slipping on all of the blood coming out of uh, Andrea Martin at this point. And when they when they scream Melissa hears that rushes to the stairs but she gets got with the bag around her head and like and it's violent like somebody whips the bag on her head slams her into the wall she grabs um she ends up getting the bag off grabs a stick is like trying to beat the killer off not in that way but you know (laughs) in a defensive way and then she's trying to get out the window at the same time and the killer just pulls out an ice skate hanging from (laughs) you know a pole or something and whips it at her and the sharpened blade of the ice skate shaves off part of her skull and that kills her yes and we see in great detail the top of her skull gone and her brain's 
like oozing out. But that's not even the crazy version of her death. Dude, as, as gory as that is, and that's it's why it was disgusting. ultimately filmed. Like they, they basically told Glenn Morgan that they needed something that was that was more violent. Yeah. And so they asked him to film the deleted scene, which ended up in the European cut. Which do you want to take this? Because it's gnarly sure, as shit. Sure. Describe so this. The scene plays out almost exactly the same at first, where she's leaning over the railing, uh, the killer throws the bag over her head, and then stabs her in the eye, and then, with I believe with the unicorn, and then um, pulls out one of her eyes, like this, like we got the eye violence, but then turns her head into bowling ball and jams their fingers into into her eye sockets and uses that to drag her away down the hallway and it's not as um, it's not as obviously goopy as her brains but it is so much more um, cruel and sinister and violent in its own way Well, that it, it's freaky it's because she's thrashing right. as she's being dragged by her eye sockets down the hall it is it's so Ugh. disturbing when when i saw that scene you know, uh, on the deleted scenes i was like a that should have been in the movie <laughs> because i'm a sick person and b that is way worse than the gory brain stuff and c that's how i want to go that i a gypsy told me that's how i would die yeah. Oh, yeah. so you know i got that going for me i guess um, thinner, thinner. <laughs> they told me, and I was like, mm, I don't think so. The, the, what she did to me, she rubbed my cheek and said, I suck it. It's like, <laughs> oh no. And I said, hey, lady, no tongues. Come on. So, so, Kelly and Lee now go back inside looking for Melissa, who is now dead by bowling ball eye socket or ice skate. You be the judge. <laughs> And they find Lauren in a room who has been drooling drunkenly on the bed, which is pretty funny. Love it. And, uh, but anyway, so Kyle shows back up at this point who, cause he was hiding behind Boy. the door. Like from, a bad penny. And then Lee goes after Kyle and then we discover that Lauren actually has been killed by the unicorn thing. And everyone thinks that Kyle was the killer. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's not me. Um, there's somebody else in the house. And they're going up into the attic. And as soon as he opens the attic door, he gets grabbed. Yeah. And is pulled up in into the attic. It's like, you're my family now. Bleh. And See, he thought he was invincible because he had the most fucking scary ass weapon ever to hit the streets bow. He had a butterfly knife. I, you that know, shit freaks me out. It's those haunt my dreams. They're so scary. I was watching Invasion USA a little bit earlier, and there is a oh my God. there is a woman who has a butterfly knife for about two seconds before uh, Richard Lynch. <laughs> slams her head into the table to make her cocaine uh oh my god that, go into that's, her brain that scene freaked me out as a kid oh my god that scene like, don't, don't waste that cocaine bitch just a side note <laughs> the scene in invasion usa where richard lynch simultaneously like jams this coke tube up them this woman's nose and then shoots a guy three times in the dick before then shoving the woman out the window is one of the most jaw dropping moments in cinema. Dude. Dude. It's like what what I don't I don't even know who these people are, and he just shot Billy Drago in the penis multiple times. Friend died like a stuck Irish pig, he says. Uh, as he bleeds to death from his testicles. <laughs> it, it was shocking. I, I've forgotten that all of that happened in the space of like three seconds. It's uh, the, 
tremendous. Miracle. Speaking of the miracle, miracle of the 80s, what a fine time to be an American. Joseph Zito, once again, bringing it home. That guy just couldn't make a bad movie. Dude. <laughs> yeah, Friday the 13th Part 4 and Invasion USA? How are you not in, you know, like, they have the uh, some Oscar named after you, like the Cecil B. DeMille Award or something. The you know? Zito. Yeah, the Golden Zito. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, yeah, so Kyle gets, uh, sucked into the attic. Um, Kelly tried to get into the attic, but it, the door slammed shut. And, um, Kelly finally gets it open in time to see Kyle being stabbed also with the unicorn statue. And then one of his eyes is ripped out, ripped out and eaten. Then Lee goes after, uh, I think it's Agnes who's doing all this, right? So Lee goes after Agnes. She gets thrown, um, across the attic and that's where she sees Claire in the rocking chair. And then Lee tries to save Kelly from Agnes, gets thrown into a hole in the floor where she lands on like the the stairwell beneath and is knocked out for a minute um she ends up getting a kelly gets a bag over her head and while she's fighting she grabs a fork and stabs agnes in her in her eye but it turns out that it's a fake eye letting us know like oh this is in fact a grown-up agnes who is now seven and a half feet tall and also looks like a stuntman. Here's the thing. First viewing for me works really well. It worked at the time because, you know, you see Billy escape and you don't really know. I mean, and you're like, well, wait a minute. It's got long hair now. So we don't know when he escaped. How long has he been out? Like, was it the same Christmas night or was it a Christmas night several years ago that Billy's been living in this house? Because I kind of was like whoa there's two there's billy and agnes so it actually works the first time and after repeated viewings that part kind of falls apart the biggest thing that falls apart is trying to make lee out to be a red herring like could this be agnes grown up because at the beginning of the movie when they show who's stalking claire they show the long blonde hair for a split second and if they just held back a little bit longer, I think, than that, you know, on repeat viewings, you could still kind of, like, see how Lee's one of the red herrings, one of the suspects. Yeah. Um, I like that. Yeah, I, it, it doesn't totally work uh, in, in terms of kind of doing that head fake. But I still do like the fact that I think I would have liked it more if the whole time it was just Agnes. Right, you know? and Billy had just was still... Or Billy was dead and she had his body, you know. Something, the huge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the huge. You know, where you just stuff the body and keep it. Oh um, yeah. But, alright, so Kelly then tries to reason with Agnes. Uh, when she's like, look, it's cool. Your brother's not here. He can't hurt you anymore. You don't have to do all this murdering like you've been doing. And Agnes says i don't have a brother just a father and then it turns out billy is in fact in the attic with them as well yes and those strings kick in the blah, 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 as billy bursts in the room oh it's so great yeah classic it's very good and and so we get another like we're running around agnes and kelly um are, are scrapping they end up falling into uh another of these like deep chasms that the house has between the walls and agnes ends up falling all the way down but kelly's hanging on and then billy's coming to grab kelly and uh then lee ends up coming to the rescue because she's gotten her shit back together and woken up and shaking off the the initial fall uh they she ends up like punching through the wall like the terminator 
to get to Kelly. Yes. And then they, she pulls Kelly out, out with all the commotion and hubbub and whatnot. The Christmas tree in the attic is now catching fire because of some candles that have fallen. <laughs> and then it falls into the hole with Agnes and Billy in it. And then Kelly and Lee get outside as the whole place like is going up in flames and whatnot. The laundry room is on fire. And this is where we get into like alternate ending territory. Oh boy. So I he, forgot about them. So here's the, the original in, or the theatrical ending is they go to the hospital. The, the bodies of Agnes and Billy are also brought to the hospital. Kelly and Lee are there. And this is the moment where Lee is like, says, Oh, I don't have any sisters left. So I'm going to open this gift from Claire and it's uh, a watch or something on the back. It says sisters forever. And again, it kind of reinforces the main theme of the movie of this idea that, Hey, we're, we're sort of this weird, like cobbled together family because of the shared experience that we've gone through and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, anyway, the nurse comes in and tells Kelly, like, hey, we need to get you to the x-ray because our radiologist is only here for, like, 15 more minutes and he ain't coming in on Christmas. So if we're going to do x-rays tonight, we need to take you right now. So off they go. Lee goes back into Kelly's room a little bit later to see if she's back from the x-rays. And she, she sees what she thinks is Lee in the bed. But she forgot that Lee or that Kelly isn't eight feet tall. <laughs> I was going to say. Because <laughs> it turns out it's Agnes who wasn't dead at all and grabs Lee, snaps her neck. Kelly comes <sighs> back in the room, uh, doesn't see Lee's body, but she does see blood like pooling in the light above, which suggests that, hey, Agnes and or Billy are now up to their old tricks again here in the hospital, you know, creeping through the walls and whatnot. And so she grabs a defibrillator <laughs> and shocks Agnes right in the fucking skull cooking yep. her. She does it the max power way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I really like it. And then that's not enough because then Billy comes out of the ceiling and there's a whole, like, Halloween 2 chase sequence with Billy chasing after her, and one thing leads to another, and he ends up going off a railing and is impaled on the hospital Christmas tree. And that is the moment where I'm kicking myself for not having the wherewithal to go see this shit in the theater. Because that moment, when he's impaled on a Christmas tree, we love Christmas slashers in this house. Yeah. Watch all the Christmas slash any tenuously Christmassy horror movie. We're gonna watch it. This one impaled on a Christmas tree. I can't think. I think maybe all the Santas getting murdered in uh, Don't Open Till Christmas. I think that almost gets as Christmassy <laughs> as having your killer impaled on a fucking Christmas tree. Oh, it's so good. It's nuts. And the the real sell on this is when you get the close-up of him impaled, you see a little bit of intestine yes. kind of move, like it shifts as, as he slides down. Um, and then that's it. And so th that's the, the U.S. theatrical ending. The U.K. theatrical ending um, ends after Agnes... Uh, gets shocked in the skull right. and then the original ending before dimension came in and was like no 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 enough of this touchy feely bullshit let's see some violence it originally just ended with oh hey the, these two girls have forged this bond with each other they survived bada bing bada boom and then you hear much like the original black christmas a phone ringing in the background yes 
and the camera pans away a long slow pan out like like back up back up and there's a attic presumably or just Mm -hmm. like a floor above theirs and there's a santa one of those glowing santas sitting in the window and it's like oh shit they're not done with this guy yet but yeah that's a nice nod to the original but yeah i can't touch that i can't touch that that theatrical man yeah it is so brazenly gory and that's it that's the end of the movie you know right um it is brazenly gory which i appreciate as as is much of the movie like the one decision that they made that is inexplicable to me is the michelle trackenberg death which is bloodier but not nearly as as intense and i i feel like that was the the bad decision that dimension made like i kind of like their instinct of like make it even bloodier and i'm totally fine with that but they they needed to recognize you need to recognize that being dragged down the hallway by your eye sockets is way worse than getting your head sliced by how many times have you seen that in a horror film right like never i can't i can't you know i've seen some crazy shit yeah and that moment is like and i'm so you know we're so jaded with gore and everything but i i just imagine if you and i were watching that deleted scene together for the first time both would have been like whoa yeah dude it's it's (laughs) rough man It, it like it's the most memorable death of the movie and it's not in the movie (laughs) yes uh, but all right, so let's let's talk about the performances in this. I, you know, both yeah. of us kind of briefly mentioned this, but it's got a, a really great cast of kind of young actors that uh, Michelle Trachtenberg and Katie Cassidy, who played Kelly, um, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, of course, Lacey Chabert, Andrea Martin. Like, it's got kind of a murderer's row of attractive young women plus Andrea Martin from that era. And yeah. and you said it earlier. I think I think they're all very good. Yeah. You know, they're they're all game. They all know what's going on. I think Lacey Chabert in particular really sells her character and is really fun. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead has some some really like weenie shrinking lines and looks great. in the movie. Great yeah, stuff. It, it's it's great. I mean, is, is any any anyone you want to call out uh, in particular? Um, I think, ah, man, that's a good, that's a really good question. Um, and and that's part of my problem with the movie still is, is like, they're all good. I think the writing lets them down a little and I, because I still have to just dig and dig and dig to find what's special about each character, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the our freaking superstar sensation, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I mean, she's so it's, fun. And part of it is like knowing where her career is going to go. And like, and I, it's so hard to not see her as, you know, Scott Pilgrim, lo- the Scott Pilgrim's love interest and everything. It's just, she's just amazing. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I'll just go with her. Yeah. yeah I, I think she's terrific. I, uh, like I said, I think Lacey Chabert's great. Um, Katie Cassidy is one of those like utility performers that I'm never like she never blows my socks off but she's totally fine in this and and continues to be fine and other stuff that I've seen her in um, I and I do wish that we had seen more out of the the, the actor who played Eve I think uh, she she was really like weird and, and to know that she's actually a model and it's yeah. like, oh well, I would I would really like to see her in something else and see if she's got any chops, but eh, you know. Such is life, I suppose. Um Alright, let's let's get to th- this is going to be probably a brief conversation, but sort of the theme of the movie, what is this really about? We've talked about this to to some extent already, but it, it I mean, I think that Glenn Morgan talked about this as well it really is just kind of about the notion of family, whether it's yeah. the family that Agnes and Billy are trying to create and be weirdos or the soror- the, the family of, of girls that make up this sorority. And also the fact that they kind of, you know, there, there's uh, some talk like Heather has a line early in the movie 
where she's talking about going home and they're like but what about us here your sisters and she's like yeah my family likes me so and i like them so i'm gonna go spend time with them and not you losers <laughs> and it's like dude it's all about the sisters man right right about the sisters bro um yeah i think that that's exactly the themes of this movie right there yeah, any anything else that you you picked up on that that was really the only thing I sussed out. Um, <clears throat> incest is problematic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a good little point. bit. Good point. <laughs> um, um, weirdly, I find the mom really attractive, and I I I messed up. Um, I'm a messed up person, I guess, because I think that actress was really gorgeous. And actually, she cleans up really good when she's not playing a disgusting uh, incest hag. She's actually a beautiful lady. The fact that she has not been in a Rob Zombie movie <laughs> is stunning. Quite Just great. staring at her phone like, come on. Come on. She Yeah, doing the Meg Foster uh, run where she is just incredibly foul. Yeah, I, I I don't disagree with that. She does have that kind of like aristocratic northeastern kind of look. That and and the fact that she gets naked in this movie is one of those moments where you're like, I did not see that coming. This is not a character I thought I was going to see the breasticles of. Yeah, and it's it's the whole sequence of her like trying to get some and her drunk husband has passed out on the stairs and she actually says oh not again or no she says oh every time and i'm like i would stay awake i mean look she knew who she married you know like i don't think that that happened (laughs) during the the courtship as well i'm pretty sure (laughs) she married the guy holding the fucking hammer right (laughs) that's probably why like i gotta keep this guy quiet I don't need him. He'll, he'll, he'll hammer at me forever. How <laughs> Al hangs the hammer, uh, she <laughs> says. Um, okay, so let, let's just kind of do the final thoughts here uh, as we're wrapping up. Um, so hit me with, I know you've seen this movie a bunch more than I have. So uh, why, why should people see or not see this movie? Uh, you should see it because it is very energetic it's propelled uh it's it's powered by the vitreous humor of eyeballs it's uh it this movie is crazy completely batshit crazy and it's um weirdly like the one of the most christmasy christmas horror movies it piles on that extra 12 um like uh extra 12 what's the word i'm looking for um strings of lights oh yeah (laughs) that's the 12 eyeballs of christmas no extra strings of lights like every time they think the house is decorated enough they say ah nah put another quarter ton of tinsel around just keep the cats away from it which is probably why there's no cat scare in the movie they had too much tinsel it's too dangerous but yeah it's this is just a megaton bomb of gore and Christmas cookies, both flesh and not flesh. And I, I yeah, I kind of wouldn't change a thing, even though my minor complaints about it are, are have become even more minor as we've been talking. I I'm a big fan of this one. Yeah, I uh I would tend to agree with most of that. Um I do I, I think you're right. I think that there are too many characters, uh, even though I wouldn't want to change the body count of this movie. Right. Um, I think sometimes the the ways that the kills happen are a little too repetitive. Uh, and, and I also think the movie kind of runs out of steam once it gets to the hospital, even though there is the great impaling of uh, Billy on the Christmas tree. Although I still... I, weirdly, I prefer Agnes getting the shock to the cranium from the defibrillator i find that very funny and weird and wonderful but it's yeah i mean at the end of the day it, it's it's a completely different animal than the 74 black christmas it's not nearly as smart it's not as atmospheric it's not as as creepy it, it doesn't have 
uh, an inch of subtlety in it. But like like how the, the 74 movie is just kind of a classic. I understand why it's a classic now after seeing it. And, you know, the, the discussion that Court and I had about it is now in the books. But uh, I kind of... I had a great time with this movie. It was such a, a lot of fun. And it was... Again, all the things we talked about, it's bloody and weird and funny and just outrageous. Like, every time you you turn around, something just fucking crazy is happening in this movie. And and I love it for that. So, uh, let, let's get around to rating this thing. Um, I'll go first. I Based on what we have said, I'm going to give this a, a solid... A, a no bones about it three and a half out of five nice uh nice. yeah i i four sounds a little too classy for this movie four is a classy kind of movie this is not in any way classy this is just a hey i've got some friends over we're drinking some eggnog let's throw on a movie to enjoy uh for this hor- horrific christmas season and it, it's gonna do you right so uh tell me why i'm wrong <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm going to go with uh, four, uh, bordering on a 4.5. If, if um, just a couple little tweaks were different, and, and I can't even explain how they would have worked my little like, oh, but I wish they'd done this. I wish they'd done this. It doesn't matter. It's like, this is, is what it is. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say strong four easily. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, Richard, now we come to the point where I try to tell you some things that maybe you don't know about this movie. Please. But given Please. the fact that we've watched all the same supplemental material, maybe you do. Um, so, uh, Glenn Morgan, as he was crafting the character of Billy in, in this film, uh, based a lot of the uh, the trauma, the childhood trauma of Billy, as well as his uh, killer instinct, on the actual serial killer Ed Kemper as made famous by uh, the movie uh, or television show Manhunt. Um, oh, wow. Nice. I see that now. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. As, as soon as you hear that, you're like, oh, of course. That's why <laughs> the mother is the way she is. Um, so the uh, the character of Agnes, the eight foot tall, murderous, androgynous, uh, one-eyed killer of the movie, was also the first assistant director of this movie. And so when Agnes was not on screen murdering people, uh, the, the, uh, first AD slash killer was doing things like focus pulling on this movie, uh, which, which I really like, I think it gives it an almost indie movie kind of feel, even though it really wasn't like this was, dimension films and a a, a decent budget and all that but i like the fact that it was you know hey we're gonna get this guy who was i think had worked on willard as well uh was also going to be the killer in this so um the uh also this one we've already talked about but it's worth repeating um the there was only one killer in the original script as this was originally written, this was not going to be Agnes and Billy, but again, this was Dimension Films being like, hey, you know what's better than one killer? Two killers. <laughs> and uh, and so Glenn Morgan um, has, in a lot of ways, disowned this movie. Oh, because, yeah I, yeah, I mean, he just felt like the movie he wanted to do was a little more subtle, a little less outrageous. But I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it, Bo. Hashtag release the Morgan cut. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would watch it. I absolutely. Like, I mean, that's the thing. Some of the deleted scenes have more of the POV shots in the attic and some other POV shots, especially around the outside of the house at the beginning. So he did really do some heavy handed homages to like the whole style of the first film which hey i'm not saying that would have worked but i mean i'm i you know like i would just just for fun i would love to see his version yeah if if he could go back and kind of cut 
the stuff that he didn't want to shoot. And actually, the uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, the thing with Michelle Trachtenberg was like he had done something more subtle. They were like, hey, do this thing with the eye sockets and, and dragging down the hall. And he was like, well, if you think that's vicious. And then went back and kind of in secret did the uh, the ice blade, the, the ice skate thing. Nice. And put that in and was just like, well, how's this? This is the bloodiest thing I can think of. And they were like, you know what, kid? We like it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's a shame that for Beginsies, it's a shame that Glenn Morgan never did another feature film because That's he's crazy. Right. He is genuinely, I think, a very talented horror director. Yeah. Clearly loved Black Christmas. Uh, seemed to have a lot of reverence for the material. I thought, like I said, at the upfront, I thought Willard was great too. Um, it's it's a shame that audiences did not, you know, give this movie a chance. Um, I have uh, I have one piece of trivia that I learned today about this film. Go on. This was marketed as a Final Destination movie in Japan. I saw that as well. That's really <laughs> funny. That's so cute. I yeah. love it. That's like all the Italian sequels to uh, the Evil Dead, and and uh, that had nothing to do with the Evil Dead. I love that. That's yeah. great. Um, Richard, uh, as expected, this was a blast. Oh yeah, dude, this is wonderful. And so we will have you back again very soon because we're going to talk about Lose. Mm. Yes, please. Uh, that that's going to happen. Pl- or or Plus. Pl- plus plus me. I was going to say that. Yep. You, <laughs> we were going down the same horrific path together. Uh, which is a movie I don't know if I've ever talked about with any... At any length in public. But yeah. it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. And we will we will dig into that in January. Um, in the meantime, where can people hear more out of you uh, should they want to? And they'd be, frankly, fools not to. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, good old Hello, This is the Doomed Show is on the Legion Podcast Network. Um, the archives of the old episodes are over at doomedmoviethon.com. And I got a YouTube channel. It's a Doomed Moviethon, and you can watch uh, my face, uh, talk about movies, and uh, lots of footage of my cats. Oh, uh, what about. What you want. Yeah, well, <laughs> the internet just wants more cats. Uh, <laughs> pimp your books. Oh, yes. Um, Available on the Amazon rainforest.org. Um, I have three books. Uh, Giallo Meltdown, a movie-thon diary, where I watch too many Giallo movies. A book called, strangely enough, Doomed Movie-thon, where I have a lot of movie-thons of Elvis movies and Jess Franco movies and Stephen Chow movies and other names. And uh, last but mostly least is my blog in book form called Cinema Somnambulist. And that's the book that... Um, Nobody wanted, but I wanted it. So I guess I count as me, and I have it on my shelves now. So you should look at it too, people. Also on Amazon Rainforest dot org, uh, Fitzcarraldo. Um, that's a, a Werner Herzog joke for yo ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thanks as always, like man. That. You were the best, and uh, I will be right back to uh, wrap up this episode. And there you have it, folks. That is the conversation about Black Xmas, a.k.a. Black Christmas 2006. Again, I really had a blast talking to Richard about all that. And I have a lot of affection for Richard, as I'm sure you heard in the course of that conversation. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, you know from the front of the episode what's coming soon, so I'm not going to repeat any of that. What I will do is I'll say thank you very much for listening. Uh, If you would, please continue to share the show around. Um, We have been picking up listeners each month, and that's wonderful. And I would like to continue to do so. Uh, And thanks to everyone who has been liking the show and sharing the show on all the social media platforms. And uh, thanks to Boomer for leaving a a review over there on Apple uh, iTunes. If you would do the same, I would really appreciate it. That still matters a whole lot, way more than you think it ought to. And uh, wherever it is that you get the show, if you just leave us a rating review over there, 
it would be much appreciated. So anyway, got a lot of fun stuff coming uh, both next week and into January. All that stuff is plotted out. And I think that's going to be a real good time. We're not going to be doing a series. We're going to do uh, a bunch of one-off episodes. And I think you're going to uh, enjoy the movies that we pick. And until then, folks, have yourselves a great rest of the week. And thank you, as always, for hopping on board the Dark Parade. See you next time.